Hi everybody! Today we're going to install MySQL 8 on a Windows 10 machine. As you can see, I have the settings panel for my Windows 10 machine up. You can see that I have a RAM of 32 gigs. That should be more than enough. You can also see that my operating system is a 64-bit operating system and we will need that information later. So, in order to install MySQL, I am going to uh, dev.mysql.com slash downloads slash installer. And uh, this will default to the Windows installer for me. So I want to be very uh, convenient. So I'm going to pick the MSI installer, which is basically an install wizard. And I'm going to pick the web version because 15.9 megs are faster to download. So I'm going to download that. And as you can see, it says here, begin your download, log in using Oracle web account. We don't need that. All we need to do is click on no thanks, just start my download. So then I'm going to pause the video now while it downloads. All right, my download was successful. As you can see here, my SQL installer web community has downloaded. So let's open it. I'm going to have to supply the admin password for this machine. And now the MySQL installer will open. I'm going to select the de developer default because that installs everything that I want, including MySQL server, the shell, the router, the workbench. That's very important. MySQL for Excel, you never know, right? Uh, Visual Studio, SQL connectors, and so on and so on. And then, oh, there's a check requirements screen. The following products have failing requirements. Wow, so we did not prepare this machine adequately enough for a MySQL install. Now let's see what the installation requirements are. Then we're going to follow them. We're going to cancel out of this installer and relaunch the installer. So as we can see, MySQL server requires that Microsoft Visual C++ 2015 redistributable package for 64-bit is installed because Right now, it's not installed, so MySQL cannot install on top of it. Let's see what else is required. Yeah, nothing else. Then we've got some Python connectors. Uh, those can be useful for data mining purposes. That requires an installation of Python 3.6. We're probably not going to do anything with Python just yet, so our best bet is to Look for the Microsoft Visual C++ 2015 redistributable package in order to get the MySQL install going. So I'm going to cancel out of that. And I'm going to open a Google window. I'm going to type in Microsoft Visual C++ 2015 redistributable package setup. And as we can see here, Microsoft has a download site for this. So we're going to go right here. We're going to, I'm going to select English as my language and I'm going to hit download. And as we can see, there is an option to download for 64-bit. This is what I'm going to use for my 64-bit computer or an x86, that's a 32-bit download. We're going to for this machine, choose the 64-bit download. Here it is. So and then I'm going to open it and I'm going to run it. So and now it's installing. Again, I have to supply the administrative password for this machine. And now it's initializing. I'm going to pause the video while that happens. So as you can see, my Visual C++ install was successful. I'm going to close out of that. All right. Well, let's see. My installer should now run. And I should be able to um, install my SQL just fine. Let's see. I'm going to pick the developer default again, as I did before. And this is looking good. So 
Okay, um, we didn't want to install Python anyway. Ready to install. Look at this. Let's see. We've got our downloads ready. We have a couple of errors here that we're going to, to resolve later on. And we're seeing that the SQL Server has installed and the work for the workbench is going to install. That looks pretty good. And so on and so on. I'm going to pause the video now to make sure that we're not watching paint dry. All right, so we're done with the screen. We're seeing that there are a couple of errors here. I'm going to uh, ask it to try again. And we're seeing here we've got some errors here and some failures. So we're going to need to resolve those. And uh, let's see where that takes us. Now, um, we're seeing we have, we're having to configure our MySQL server. And for that, I want to install a standalone MySQL server with the classic MySQL replication. We're not going to set up a sandbox in ODB. My configuration type is development computer. And we're seeing here, we're leaving the port as the standard port 3306. Later on, we're going to change this. Uh, we're not going to name any pipes. We're leaving everything in the default configuration. Now, we're going to need to use a strong password encryption for authentication. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to enter my SQL root password right now. And I'm going to repeat that. All right, and I'm also going to add a user because you should really never use the root user to log into MySQL. We'll talk about why that is um, a little bit later, just to give you an idea. Um, typically, root passwords are the ones that are being attacked the most and root accounts as well. So we always want to ensure that in order to have adequate security in our system, we never give the root user and root password out, and we build other users. So for example, something like dbadmin, and uh, for my dbadmin um, password, I'm going to pick, of course, a good password here, even though it shows it's weak. And then I'm going to leave everything else as um, default. And I hit apply configuration so that all the uh, configuration changes can take place and that my install can proceed. I'm going to pause this video again. All right, as you can see, all my configurations have executed. I'm going to finish. And we know that I have configured my MySQL server because it says configuration to complete and now the samples and the examples that I want to install are going to be installed right here on the MySQL server. I'm going to have to enter the root password for this. This will be the root password that I have um, in, uh, added before and as you can see if I hit check here I can check that I've indeed entered the correct root password and I'm going to hit execute now and it's going to run the scripts in order to install any sample databases and other documentation and I'm going to pause the video again. All right, now all of my examples are installed. You can see here two green checks. I'm going to finish and next. So now I can start the MySQL workbench after the setup, and I can start the MySQL shell after the setup, and I'm going to do exactly that. So as you're seeing here, this is the MySQL shell, and this is MySQL workbench. So in MySQL workbench, I'm seeing here the local instance of MySQL 80, which is exactly, or 80, which is exactly what I have just created. And as you're seeing, I'm connecting as root, which I should really not do. Um, and uh, this is localhost on, uh, on port 3306. 
So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to double click. And here I'm being asked again to enter the root password. Now in the real world, this would never be a root connection. This would be a connection that would be um, performed by a system admin or by a DBA admin or something like that. So I'm going to enter my root password here. And I'm not going to save the password in Vault because you should never save the root password anywhere other than in your head, of course. And as we're seeing here, I can now check the server status. And what we're seeing here is that my server is running. It's taking 13% of my CPU. And uh, I have some connections into it. That does not surprise me because I did install some add-ons ODBC and others. So then I can see my client connections. I have no client connections, which I shouldn't right now because I'm not uh, signed in on the MySQL console. I should be able to see my users and privileges. And indeed, here is root. That's me right now. And here is DB admin. Remember DB admin? This is the configuration for my DB admin user. And that includes the account limits. It includes the administrative roles. And here I can adjust what I want my DB admin user to have access to. And it includes the schema privileges. Now I don't have any schema installed right now other than the schemas that I have installed with the examples and the documentation beforehand. And those schemas I can see over here. One of them is the Sotila schema. So when I, ex when I extend that, expand this, then I can see here my database with tables and views, stored procedures and functions and what all these are. Um, we will discuss later. And then I can see here is my sys uh, schema with tables and so on and so on. And here is my world database with tables So it looks like my database installed fine, and it also looks like um, uh, it also looks like it's running.